meet 17-year-old Sam and 20-year-old Evan. They moved in together after dating for only five months, but theirs is no ordinary gay relationship. These two young men were born girls. I think I make a pretty good lad. It just so happens that I was born in a female's body. If I had the option of either living as a girl or not living at all, I would just choose to not live because it's not life for me. Sam and Evan's change from girls to men has not been easy for their families to accept. I was devastated, angry, upset. I don't think you'd ever expect that your kid's going to come up to you and say they're not what sex they are. Underneath their clothes, the lads both still have female bodies. They want to change this, but it's not straightforward. I might be intersexed. <laughs> oh, my God. As the young couple try to get on with their day-to-day -day life, they face prejudice and intimidation. They're throwing eggs. Look, man, they're getting pretty close. Where's it coming from? This is Sam and Evan's story. As they come of age... You are now a proper adult. ..and change their bodies from girls to men. Seventeen-year-old Sam is trying to find his own way in the world. He recently moved out of his parents' home in Surrey to move 200 miles away into a council house in Rochdale with his boyfriend, Evan. I tell you what, this is right hard work when you're down at the bottom. Obviously, it's a big decision, especially moving in with your partner, because obviously there's always the question, what if it doesn't work? I was quite worried about people judging me, judging us for moving in together after how long? Five months. Life's about risks, really. Got to take them. Oh, you dipped on the floor. Do it on the floor. It doesn't... The roller doesn't fit in. Oh, my God, sorry. Yeah, I feel really lucky that I found Evan. I, I, I think he's one in a billion. The bit is. of the roller is coming off <laughs> the wall. Yes, well, it was 50p. I don't expect first-class rollers. He's probably the person I feel most comfortable with. Yeah, out of anyone, I feel most comfortable with him. He's like my best friend, really. The room's going to be good when it's done. Yeah, it's good. It feels like it's kind of like our room now rather than that. I've just moved into yours. We are from very, very different backgrounds. I genuinely thought everyone had a cleaner until I was 14 or 15. And it really, that, that was news to me um, because that was the lifestyle I'd always been brought up in. Why should everybody else be different? When I first ever redecorated Sam, I was about seven. In fact, it was when I first moved to the house and it's not been decorated since. I act very snobby a lot of the time, but I'm not. At heart, he knows that. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have moved here. This is better because it's kind of... It's a lot more masculine. More masculine? What? Yes. Green stripe? It's, it, well, it's better than the Does pink. it matter how masculine it no, is, really? No, but even... It, I don't know, it's, it's more me now, if that makes yes. sense. It's, it's older. And it's absolutely fabulous, darling. You're so gay. Yes, dear. I'm very much the more feminine of the two. He very much wears the trousers, so that works. So I do all the cooking. He cleans up after dinner. Just because I like girly things, it doesn't make me any less of a man. I look ridiculous. We are getting on together very, very well, so that's not really a problem. Um, it, it just feels nice to sort of move out and start my own life, really. I love you. Fine, then. Sam and Evan have been living together for a couple of months now, but they don't have the house to themselves. In the bedroom next to their love nest is Evan's mum, Kath. They're happy, and I'm happy, and I love having Sam here. He's, you know, he's a great guy, he, you know, and he's making my son happy, so I love him even more for that, you know. Happy birthday to you. I've drunk Happy birthday It's Sam's 18th, and he's spending it with his new family. Happy birthday, dear Sam. Happy birthday to you. Evan's mum, Kath, has organised a party to celebrate this milestone. You know, if I was outside, I'd do this now. Yeah, but don't. Here we go. Oh, I'll never sit down, you're like, <laughs> 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 you just said, like, give us a kiss? It's my 
boyfriend, Mother. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Happy birthday, mate. You are now a proper adult. <laughs> it's very nice to, like, move in here because uh, it is like another another family and, I'd like us all. and his mum does mother me a lot sort of in the it, where, where i i need mothering i do love you for all my shouting <laughs> and i'd like us all to wish sam a happy 18th birthday happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday sam. i feel like i've got two sons now i have grown really really fond of sam and as far as i'm concerned you know i treat him like one of my own and I will be there for him as much as I would be forever. You can have it whatever you put. Oh! You're going to mug me? I might get a mug you. It's that gorgeous award, eh? And I believe I can run a decent marathon. Thank you very much. Download Veely now. What makes Sam and Evan's modern love story unusual is they were both born girls. I know loads of people are going to get confused with this. People do get confused with this. Me and Sam are both men. We were both born female. However, we are both in a relationship, so because we are both men, we are in a gay relationship. Sam and Evan met at a support group for teenagers who believe they were born into the wrong bodies. You look a bit gormless there. I am a bit gormless there. I look like a baby. They have both already made the huge decision to begin the process of changing their gender from female to male. I was known as Yvonne. Now I am Evan, and I'm happy like that. Sam and Evan have embarked on a journey to transform their bodies, but it's a long process. The first stage has been to change their names and to begin to dress as men. Obviously, one of the most important things to passing as male is the clothes you wear. You obviously need to be wearing male clothes. Oh, I like that. It's, it's a T-shirt pretending to be a shirt. I like them. Show me for me. No. Probably the most important thing is actually something that people don't see at all. Underneath my top, I've got this um, black spandex lycra thing. Thing is it's known as a binder. Um, it basically, it makes your, your chest flat. Um, Stretchy. See, yeah, you don't have big boobies everywhere. Um, like. It's also very uncomfortable in general and, and gives you back pain. But if you weigh it up against having boobs, it's kind of less painful. Um, I have stress about any lump at all, ever. Um, but there I you suppose go. you're smaller though as well. With me being big, a guy in my size would have... Man boobs. Man boobs, yes, so I've fine. just got man boobs. Not quite done yet, there we go. Thank you. Oh, I do like that. Do you? I think it's just nice because of the sleeves. <laughs> like an Eskimo. <laughs> Messing up my hair. <laughs> Underneath their clothes, Sam and Evan still have female bodies and need some help in the trouser department. Like a T-shirt. Today, with the help of Kath, they're shopping for a packer, which will give them the appearance of having male genitals. So what sort of uh, willy will you get then? God, <laughs> kill me now. Uh, um, right. <laughs> they're a bit droopy, aren't well, they? Well, it's because they're stupidly because they're big. A medium is seven inches long, like flaccid. Right. <laughs> so you and don't then, want and, and a extra big small, one, do extra you? Extra small, right, is actually normal size. You Imagine don't want having one that down bigger. your pants, you're not going you to be able to shut your legs. No, that's you genuinely look I stupid. Got. Right. Oh, so we just get. What, what, does it, what does it say? Pink Limpy Pacha. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's name right, isn't it? Pink Limpy. It is a bit limpy. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sam began living as a man when he was just 16. If a person feels they're trapped in the wrong body, many experts recommend they live as their preferred gender for at least a year before they begin treatment. Six months ago, Sam was prescribed the male hormone testosterone. He'll be on it for the rest of his life, but he's been unable to get to the doctors for his fortnightly injection. Good job Evan's mum, Kath, isn't afraid of needles. All right, I'm gonna fill it up. Yeah, well, I've not done that before. I don't mind injecting, yeah, but I don't particularly want to do that bit. All right, okay. Feel very do you want me to hold that? No, no, it's all right. Mind you don't spill it. 
Uh, I'm about five days late now uh, for my shot, which doesn't sound like very much, but a lot of people actually get either upset or angry sort of towards the end of their shot when they need a new one. In these last five, six days, it's been absolutely terrible. Like, just been arguing and stressed. And then I start feeling awful. And just, I don't know, it's like having PMS. I was quite scared when I uh, started testosterone, actually. Looking a bit nervy there, Sam. I am a bit nervy, I don't like injections, especially when it's done at home. <laughs> You're not going to give me some sort of anal exam, you. <laughs> Put them away. Put them away. I don't know what I'm going to be getting involved in, do I? <laughs> yeah, you're not going to be able to give me an extension. No, I'm only kidding. Yeah. I'm only pulling your leg. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick in That's your attempt at relaxing me, is it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Come okay. on, show us your <laughs> Although, yes, I had the choice of, as to whether to have that needle put in my body or not, at the same time, I knew if I didn't, I would continue to feel, you know, absolutely horrific about myself. I can tell you now with absolute certainty, if I had the option of either living as a girl or not living at all, I would just choose to not live because it's not life for me. That w was not life and I didn't feel like I was living at all. The male hormone testosterone has made Sam's body change. He's become hairier and his voice has become deeper and more masculine. Today, Sam's showing Evan a video he made before he started having testosterone treatment. Being confronted by how he used to sound and look is uncomfortable viewing for Sam, but reveals just how much he's transformed already. Really, I don't like seeing myself, um, you know, before I transition because it does remind you of a time when you felt absolutely awful in yourself. It reminds you of something you've worked so hard to get away from, you know, you just don't want to look at it anymore. It's like you have a phobia of yourself. Um, my gender identity affects big hair. Life on a it's not that big. It's huge. You're like Elvis. You're not like Elvis. You're you do. Like Elvis. Um, at the same time, I'm very much... Evan isn't on testosterone yet, as he has not lived as a man for a year. The toilets I use that kind of stuff. Uh, but at the same time, I'm very much the same person. Um, I have the same hobbies, same interests, same sense of... Your voice is so different now to what it was then. You sound like a very posh... I don't know how to say it without saying female. The bullying was probably worse... You sound like, um... Who's that girl? So they bullied me for uh, being some sort of lesbian. Hermione Granger. That is the one. <laughs> yes, that is who you sound like. You're a I do, don't I? Yeah. It was pretty much a homophobic culture um, in the sense that anything negative was gay. Um, My voice started to change about three days after I started taking testosterone. There was certainly more bullying than there was just before I came up. People at school just thought I had a cold for ages because they were hearing me every day as well. Whereas if I had just talked to someone on the street, they would have said it was definitely a man's voice. But, I don't know, it just, it just gets deeper and deeper. It's still getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, and from that, that sort of led to um, sort of people talking about me behind my back. You um, get pretty desperate about it, I suppose. You're just constantly living in almost like this limbo state where you've basically transitioned, but at the same time, because you're so physically unlike what you want to identify as, you can't quite socially live as that. Whereas once you've been on testosterone, to all outward appearances, you're, you're male entirely. Mm. And it's, yeah, you kind of move out of the limbo phase and go on with your life, whereas you can't when you're like that. Sam and Evan's childhoods were very different. I've got so many presents there, it's ridiculous. Evan is an only child, whereas Sam has three brothers, but that was not the only difference. Something to do with Barbie. Roller so skates. Happy. You got Barbie roller skates and you're so happy. Barbie roller skates. I would have chucked them in the bin. A Barbie bike. You see, you get so much pink stuff and you like having it. Whereas if I got anything Why like that, I, I would two be really sets upset. Of roller skates. <laughs> and I was like a really stereotypical little boy. Like the last time they managed to get me in a dress is when I was five, and that was after like two, three hours of shrieking. Daytime bar. 
Barbie. My brothers would always get the toys that I wanted to get, and because I was the only girl as well, everyone would like give me the most feminine presents they could find. And I just hated it. Especially when I grew up, because everyone gave me makeup and they just sat in a drawer and never got put on. Built it a bit more forward, like that, and then. See, this is me on the roller skates! <laughs> oh, my God. Be interested to see this. <laughs> me roller skating! <laughs> 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 I'm four. <laughs> I think because this was always me, like, all the way through growing up. So, like, if you think about it, even when I was 16, 17, in fact, even 18 going out, just before I was coming out, I'd spend about an hour getting ready. I'd do my makeup, I'd do my hair, I was wearing jewellery. So when I came out, it was a very, very hard for my family. And I think, mm. I think this shows why, really. When Evan first began to realise that he wanted to be a man, he didn't tell any of his family, even though he'd gone to his doctor for advice. I was absolutely petrified, not because I wasn't capable to do it, but family is so important to me, and I was really, really scared that my family just wouldn't understand. I was terrified that I'd be left with no-one. Instead, Evan wrote about how he was feeling in a diary, which his mum, Kath, found when cleaning his room. I was really, really angry. And I was... I was like, how dare Yvonne do this to me? And it was even to the stage where, oh, well, she's not living with me if this is what she wants to do. She's not dragging me through this. And I was just so, so angry and... I had to sort of rein it in when Yvonne come through the door because Yvonne didn't even know that I knew anything. And it was just, it was like we were play acting in the house and I just want, to be perfectly honest, I just wanted to get hold of her and I wanted to shake her and shake her and shake her and say, what the hell do you think you're doing? Kath didn't want to lose her daughter particularly because she'd already had to face this prospect when Yvonne was just a baby. She was born without a forehead. So at six months old, she was actually taken into hospital where she was cut from one ear to the other. And they made a fontanelle, so to speak, to allow the brain to grow. And I think it was at that point that I thought, this child needs me, this child needs me more than ever now, you know. Remembering she was lucky her child was still alive helped Kath come to terms with her daughter's desire to become a man. I don't think it was... I, I didn't find it easy to understand. But when your daughter's saying, Mum, it is what I want, and then you feel, well, what sort of mother am I? Why did I not know my daughter was feeling this? Well, I'm no mother, you know. I should be struck off as a mother. With his mum accepting who he really was, Evan now had to break the news to his dad, Mick, a butcher who lives 40 miles away in Liverpool. Although Mick split from Kath when Evan was a baby, the two are really close. You brought the weather down with you again then, eh? Yeah. It well hurts. Won't need the shave. <laughs> I was really, really worried that my dad and my dad's side of the family just wouldn't understand and that they'd kind of not want to know me. What do you want? Just a, a fab or a Vimto or something. Can I have or a just a lolly ice, whatever. Can I have a twist and apple cider, please? I don't think you'd ever expect that your kid's going to come up to you and say they're not what sex they are. And Sorry, when Evan told me that he wasn't Yvonne anymore and he was Evan and that's how it was going to be... Thank you very Thank much. You. Obviously, I had to tell me folks and I, I went to pieces on the phone telling them, like, I, I couldn't talk through my own tears. <laughs> you been in the football lately? Last game, last, last week, last game, of, home game of the season last week. What was the score? Got beat by Tottenham. Oh, OK. <laughs> I completely appreciate that it's a hard thing for them to understand. It took me a long time to understand and I was the one going through it. So if I struggled, then God knows how anyone else is going to find out and handle it. 
you scored with the mascot, didn't you? Because we'd go and literally every game we went, they'd win. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. Almost, anyway. It's just been a, a long learning process and it still will be a long learning process because um, I'm, I'm not really up on medical terms and all that. Uh -huh. I'm not saying I fully understand it, but I will try to fully understand it. While Evan is spending time with his dad, Sam has gone back home to Surrey, where he's meeting up with his older brother, Peter, who is gay. Do you remember when Mummy used to, like, actually come out of her bedroom and just be like, why aren't you normal like other children? <laughs> don't remember and that She used to be, like, angry with us, and she'd be like, why are you just not normal? When they were growing up, Peter was close to his little sister, so it took time to understand that Sam was now his brother. I think there was an initial feeling of I'd lost my sister, um, but he is the same person he always was. Um, he's always been that person. Even when we saw him as a girl, um, he was still Sam inside, which, yeah, it made perfect sense once I understood that. Sam wrote to his parents to tell them he wanted to be their son instead of their daughter. His mum was the first to read the letter. She came up and said, right, Sam. So you, you feel like a boy, and I was like, yes. And we had this conversation, I think, for about half an hour. Um, she was fine with it, really. Um, obviously, it, I think it's very difficult when your child transitions, but she was very, very good with it, very decent about it, um, and she recognised that if that's what I need to do um, in order to feel that I'm able to live my life, then that's what I need to do. Um, she's been very, very supportive, um, and that, that's really meant a lot. My dad sort of found me in the lounge and closed the door and said, right, I got your letter. I just want to assure you that I love you no matter what, you know, and that's the most important thing. This in the mirror and I was quite stressed. And then I thought, my they both think that this is how you are and it's not, it's not so much of a discussion when it comes up. They just pretend I was always man. That's how it works. Yeah. Which is fine. I, I used to, do you remember when I used to sit on his lap and be like, who's your favourite girl? And he was like, you are. And I'd be like, but who's your favourite boy? And he was like, I don't have a favourite boy. I love them all, be <laughs> equally. And that is Samuel's ego coming into that. play. Because obviously I am the favourite. Yeah, Let's remember that. Clearly not. <laughs> Sam went to an all-girls school from the age of four, but he felt he didn't fit in. I just knew that I wasn't a girl. I didn't realise that I was something else, you know. If I'd been to a school with boys in, I would have realised sooner. But because I had no other standard to compare myself to, I just knew that I wasn't a girl. I didn't realise that I was something else, you know. He was still attending an all-girls school when he began living as a man at age 16. I basically just looked more and more male, really. Not everyone at his school accepted the change, but there was one person who was always there for him, his friend Kat. Hello. Hello. You all right? Yeah, I'm good, you? Yeah. Are we doing like a sitting down? It was really important for me to have Kat there because I, I think without her I wouldn't have felt yeah, bad, confident you? enough to tell other people and to, you know, change to male in front of everyone else. I remember when I told my German teacher, I was like, call me Sam, she was like, warum? Which is why. <laughs> so basically I had to tell her in German. She was like, OK, since when? And I was like, since forever. And she was like, OK, then, whatever. But that's just her. She obviously would, that's the sort of thing she'd do. She's quite standoffish. She, well, yeah. yeah, she is. No, she's nice. I actually really like her. You seem a lot happier now, though. Yeah, no, I am. I am a lot happier. Definitely. I think a lot of people have said that, really. But... So I've got that much facial hair. There's, like, a week with... There's some there. Yeah, but it's, like, bubble stuff. She is, like, nothing. It's kind of bristly. Starting to live as a man was liberating for Sam. It felt like that for the whole previous part of my life, I'd been kind of kind of tied up. I felt almost like I wasn't able to breathe. But I didn't realise that until people did start seeing me as male, and then suddenly I realised how much freer I felt. But changing gender came at a price. 95% of my classmates are at university at the moment, I would say. Um, it's pretty much what you did. I mean, when people asked you what you were doing after school, they didn't say, what do you want to do once you leave? They said, what university are you going to? What subject are you going to read? So, yeah, I think they were a bit annoyed, especially because one of my teachers was really keen on me going to Oxford. You know, they say, well, you are Oxford standard. Why don't you, you know, just go, just do it? And I, I couldn't do it.
but instead of going to university, Sam moved into his boyfriend's house on an estate in Rochdale. He and Evan are usually accepted as young men by the outside world, but no matter how much they change their appearance, this is one place where people won't let Evan forget he was born female. I've lived on this estate for about 12 years. So because I've lived in the same place for 12 years, they know me before I transitioned. So the older people know me. And then because the older people know me, they tell their younger brothers and sisters. So they know me. So there's no actually me being me because they see me as a girl and not as a boy. They shout at Evan especially for being trans. The couple are desperate to get a place of their own in nearby Manchester, where no one will know they used to be girls. On their way to the bus stop to go flat hunting, some of the local kids give them even more of an incentive to move. They're throwing eggs. Like, I've been egged on four different occasions. I hate it. Oh, my God, I'm actually terrified of small children. I'm terrified of small chairs, and I'm terrified of people having a go at me. I can't deal with it at all, which is why I'm moving out. I just can't deal with it. It's really hard for me to see Sam so scared when things happen when we get shouted on on the estate, because I love him, and it's awful to see someone you love feel hurt and scared. Proper shaking. Oh, yeah, there you go. Don't cry. Look, man, they're getting pretty close. Where the f is it coming from? That one. <laughs> Prejudice is a big problem. There is quite a high suicide rate in transgendered people. Um, and the worst thing is when somebody says to you, you will always be a girl to me, because that's when they're saying, I will not accept who you are. And that's when you think, well, if nobody accepts who I am, then I am not, i.e. I must die. That's, that's basically the thought. That's why the suicide rate is so high. There is nowhere to hide as Sam and Evan face an agonising wait at the bus stop. It really annoys me that people think they have the right to shout the abuse and do what they do. Uh, yeah, it's just a really big relief to get off these things. As soon as we move, it's going to be so much better. I think people should think twice before they say something or before they throw something just on how it actually affects the person because the person has feelings too, even if you do think they're a bit of a freak because they were born a girl. I'm just terrified. I can't... I can't cope at all. <laughs> Sam and Evan are flat hunting in Manchester, a very cosmopolitan city with its own gay village. If they move here, the lads are confident they will not face daily discrimination. I just want something that has enough space to like move about, because you know loads of like studio apartments are actually tiny. Oh, that's nice. So we have to be fussy when we look around. That one's a nice kitchen. It is a nice kitchen. Thing is, you never know from the photos, do you? I think it'll be good because we can just be men. We don't have to be trans men. Yeah, we can just be us. It'll be our choice to our identity is whether yeah. we want to be out as trans or whether actually we're just going to get on with life and, and not bother about it. Mm-hmm. You can walk down the road and have your next-door neighbours. They're not going to know anything about your past. They're not going to have any ideas about what sort of person you're going to be. Yeah. You can be, be who good. you are. Do you know what, Evan? What? We'll be able to make a mess. <laughs> No, you are not making a mess. Yeah, except it's actually you who makes a mess. No, right, I make a mess with clothes. You make a mess with... When you cook, it goes So do you. No. Yeah, but you don't tidy up your dishes. You don't wash your dishes. You leave them. No. Oh, yes, you do. Excuse me, who's been doing the dishes every day this week, apart from yesterday? every day this week? Oh, yeah, me. No, no. It is a really exciting thing. That's our aim. That is our target. OK. That is our goal, and we shall take steps to get there, yes? Yes. Yeah. Evan has been dressing in male clothes for a year now and is hoping that doctors will soon prescribe him testosterone. In preparation for this, Evan has come off the contraceptive pill and is having to face something no man would normally have to. So I've now had, like, period from hell. 
as I've been on for about two and a half weeks now on one period. <laughs> so it's a bit nasty, especially when you're not supposed to have them. I find it really weird coming to buy period stuff because it's something which is associated with female and I'm not female. Would you like a bag for them? Yes, please. Okay. I feel like when I go to buy them, that they're thinking, why on earth is a boy buying sanitary towels and Tampax? And I think it's just a reminder of the body which I was born in, which is pretty crap, to be fair. £21.70, please. Thank you. Sure. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. At last, Evan has got an appointment with doctors at the Charing Cross Gender Clinic in London about beginning male hormone treatment. Sam will be making the trip with him to offer support, as he knows firsthand that taking male hormones will dramatically change Evan's life. My periods have stopped, but I haven't noticed. I just kind of forget I ever had them. I forget how it used to be, you know. It, it, it's a struggle for me to remember how I used to feel. The lads arrive in London, but Evan is worried about his meeting with doctors at the Charing Cross Gender Clinic. If they feel that I'm ready and I meet all their requirements, they will place me on testosterone. I know how I progress physically is in two doctors' hands. I think when I'm in there and I started being quizzed, it'll be all right. Because then it's just life, you're just talking about yourself. Sam knows how crucial this meeting is for Evan, because if the doctors aren't convinced that Evan should really be a man, they will not allow him to begin hormone therapy to physically change his body from female to male. An hour later, Evan has some surprising news. <laughs> well, they're done. Right! Well, I might be intersexed. <laughs> oh, um, oh, my God. And I might have to go to test back in London <laughs> to see if I've got a witch somewhere. Only you. I have a cousin. OK. <laughs> Why can't you just be normal? Go and get some lunch. <gasps> Lol. <Lolly. laughs> <laughs> can't Why can't be I just normal? be normal? <laughs> God. Evan's high testosterone levels could be the result of a condition called polycystic ovaries, which is a problem women get in their reproductive organs. Or Evan might be intersex, which means he may have some male anatomy hidden inside his body. Further tests will be needed, but for now, Evan must wait even longer before being prescribed male hormones. I kind of feel like I'm stuck in limbo at the moment. I'm ready to go through my male puberty. I'm ready to start testosterone, but I can't yet because I've not had the go ahead. I think to some extent, yes, he did have his hopes up um, because obviously he thought he was going to be prescribed it on that day. If I have got polycystic ovary syndrome, it's once again another reminder that I was born female. If I'm intersexed, it's also really stressful, but then it's kind of something about it is quite good because there's the whole, like, it means that I've got some form of maleism inside me, which kind of gives a bit of a reason, which in some ways may help. If he was intersexed, he would have an excuse to be trans and so they would give him his hormones lots faster because then he has a reason for his gender being like that. Mental. Um, but, yeah, there you go. I just want to start treatment so I can begin to be me. Despite Evan's knockback, he's determined that he wants to move on with his life. Sam and Evan need to find full-time jobs if they're ever going to fulfil their dream of getting a flat of their own in Manchester. It's fairly difficult to find a job at the moment. I mean, it's not us alone who are in this boat, really. I think it's just a question of keeping trying until we break in there. I feel when I get turned down away from jobs that it's people doing it because it's me, because of me being trans. But then I think, is it? 
am I just paranoid? Yeah, see you. Good luck. Hello, is it Evan? Yeah. Hello. Good have you got your CV there, Sam? Uh, yeah, yeah. Great right, stuff. I'll just take one of these copies over here. You've got your CV with you? I have. Yeah. All right, well, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thanks very much. First of all, you need to register on our website. OK, really simple, really painless, all right? And then you need to come in here and bring some ID with you. Needing ID is a huge problem, because although the lads have both changed their names, the only formal identification they have is from when they were female. I can't use female ID because people don't believe it's me. All right, thanks very much. Bye. Bye. For today, the job search has hit a dead end. It's two weeks since Evan was told his testosterone levels were abnormally high, which could be as a result of him having cysts on his ovaries. Today, he's on his way to have a scan of his female reproductive system. For Evan, this procedure means he has to face the reality that underneath his clothes, he has a female body. I don't associate my body as being female, so I shouldn't have ovaries. Hi there. So the thought of having to go and have a scan to see them is actually quite upsetting. I need you to undo your trousers a little bit so I can tuck this down. But things are about to get even more upsetting for Evan. To be absolutely certain, yeah. I would rather we did the internal scan because okay. that's the, the best way to scan right. to get closer to the ovaries, OK? okay. So, this is the probe. Okay. She had to do um, an internal scan, which was Quite traumatic, really, because nothing had ever been up there before. So, technically, it did take away my virginity. Sam had come along to support Evan, but now he's finding the whole experience difficult too. <laughs> right, I'm all right. I'm around, yeah? Yeah. Anyone would feel violated a little bit, you know, having your bits touched, but when that's such a personal issue to you and when you're so sensitive about it... That's the right ovary, and there is no sign of polycystic ovaries there. I felt bad for him. It was very difficult, but I think having Sam there helped. This feels weird. Evan doesn't have polycystic ovaries, and further tests reveal he isn't into sex either. Doctors think his high testosterone level was caused by his contraceptive pills. Now they've got to the bottom of the problem, Evan will soon be prescribed male hormone therapy. Starting testosterone is a really big thing and some of the changes are permanent, but because I've already been waiting a year to even get the go-ahead to start testosterone, I know it's correct for me, so I know I'm making the right decision. It's karaoke night at the pub, and Kath wants Evan to sing for her before the testosterone makes his voice break. Evan, will you sing the Titanic song for me? Yeah. Please, just one last time? Yeah. She's always been a really good singer, and she's, she's done singing lessons in school. She's been in church choirs. She sang in the Royal Albert Hall. Um, sings absolutely beautiful. No, you don't need no, me to sing. you're doing it. My mum's quite upset about me starting testosterone because it will eventually make my voice go deeper, so I will lose the higher range, which I can reach now, and I won't be able to do My Heart Will Go On For Her, which is one of her favourite songs, and she makes me do every time we do karaoke. Alas, Yvonne. <laughs> Don't you do her. I suppose when the testosterone comes, the high notes, it'll start being a bit deep, and uh, but he should still be able to do a few songs, but more, more be more Neil Diamond rather than, <laughs> uh, you know, Titanic, won't it? <laughs> Can I have a big round of applause, please, tonight for Evan? weird seeing the changes, but it's going to make him feel the person he wants to be. You know, it is going to make him feel like a proper man, not just a pretend one, so to speak. Careful, 
I need to do this to be who I am, to be true to myself, to be true to my family, and to just be the happy person who I am. If I didn't do this, I'd be living a lie. I do find it quite difficult to get to grips of it, but this is how it is, this is how he wants to be. He's, as, he's happier now than what I've ever known. When you were singing then, the ears on the back of my neck all stood up on, on the back of my neck and it brought a tear to my eye. You sung that song for me, just for me and only me. That's who you sung that for, thank you. It's a momentous day for Evan. After 15 months of living as a man, he can finally start the long process of physically changing his body by starting to take male hormones. Um, my testosterone is different than Sam's because I'm on a gel. Um, because basically I don't like needles, so I rub it in instead of getting injected into my bum. I mean, I'm really, really happy for him, you know, it's great, but I just think that people seem to think it's going to be, that's it, everything's finished, no, 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 no. Now, you know, you've got your foot in the door. That's when you've got to live the rest of your life, you know, like... Now that I'm on testosterone and I've got male hormones going through me, I suppose, physically, I'm now becoming Evan, as well as emotionally, and I'm just one step closer to being fully Evan. But while Evan is optimistic about having started his journey to becoming a man, Evan's mum, Kath, is struggling to deal with it. Everyone was, oh, you've got your testosterone, and I just sort of, like, went quiet, cos I just thought, oh, this is it now. This is my little girl, my little girl's gone now. I've got a boy, you know, there's no turning back. And I sat there and I just cried. I went into, like, a mourning. It was like I was mourning I'd lost my little girl, and I was in mourning for my little girl. What have you come to me about? the In years gone by, Kath always enjoyed dressing Yvonne in girly outfits, but now she has to accept that her daughter is gone and all her old clothes need to be thrown away. Oh, Evan, it's hard. This is all your nice stuff. You've got female sizes on these. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get it over and done with. <laughs> oh, you know, some of this stuff's really, really nice, and it's just a it's really I like that beachy. one. That, look, that did look nice underneath my vest top. Are we getting shot? Yeah, I'm not going to wear it, am I? All right, let's get them all out. Oh, God. Evan. <laughs> look what I found. <laughs> Beautiful. Look. What did you wear this for? My prom. Um, Uncle Keith's wedding. Come on, you put it on. I'm not putting it on. Go on, stick it over your head. Mum. Oh, don't you look pretty? Look like a man <laughs> in a frock. <laughs> it's cos I am a man in a frock. <laughs> that Sam and Evan are both taking male hormones, the next step is to have surgery to remove their breasts, and they could have a series of operations to create male genitalia. Surgically changing their bodies is something the lads are now considering, so they're meeting Professor Stephen Whittle, who has already completely transformed his body from female to male. Hi. Hi, Hi I'm Stephen. You must I'm be Sam. Sam? Yep. Sam? Come in. Stephen began living as a man more than 35 years ago. When I transitioned in 1975, I reckon from my research that I was only number 13 of all trans men to get treatment in this country. Number 13. Wow. We're now talking hundreds, thousands. So do you think it's easier, um, like, nowadays to be out as a trans man as opposed to how it was when you first transitioned? It has to be said, yes, it is. When I transitioned in our early years, we could not tell anybody. If anybody found out I lost my job, we'd be threatened with losing our homes, the lot, you know, we had to fight for everything just to stay alive. Stephen didn't rush into having a phalloplasty to make him a penis and wants Sam and Evan to be equally cautious. 
How long was it before you had genital surgery? Oh, a very long time. Um, I mean, it was very difficult when I transitioned. As I say, it took several years to get my chest done. And I had a hysterectomy at the same time, which was dreadful. I then waited time before I even considered phalloplasty. And it was, it was a difficult decision. And for me, waiting the 25 years was, I think, you know, very beneficial. By the time I went, I knew full well what the choices mm. were and I'd learned about it. But I still would say I wasn't actually prepared for the impact yeah. on my life. It was extensive. It was several surgeries. Um, it was extremely painful sometimes. Mm. I, mean, I certainly had tears in my eyes on more than one occasion. I'm very pleased with the result for me, but it's not 100% perfect. And I could never take off my clothes and pretend it hadn't happened. Mm. Mm. I haven't got a perfect body. Life isn't perfect. But it's damn well good enough and that's thoroughly enjoyable in every sense, and I've done the right things for me. What's important for you is to take the time so that you know when you go for anything that it's the right thing for you and that you're fully prepared for all the results. Be proud of yourselves. Be proud of what you're going to achieve. This is a huge thing that you're going to achieve. Be proud of being the man you are as a new person. Meeting Stephen Whittle was really, really cool because he was not just a transgendered man like me. He's a transgendered man who's 30 years further along the process than me. I think Sam was particularly impressed by his beard, though. You're just jealous, yeah, well, that's what it is. I'm not, because I are. don't want one. No, you do want one, because you shaved the other day. You just, shaved no, because... Because you wanted facial hair. You wanted to see no. him get facial hair. Yes, you did. You are I just, just shaved because I was bored. You're jealous. Jealous of your three measly hairs? Yes, yes I think you are, actually. Right. Evan is busy getting ready for his 21st birthday party. Are you excited? Yeah, it should be good. What do you mean? Should be good. Well, it will be good then. <laughs> 21 is a really, really big birthday, and my family, any excuse for a party, they'll have a party. But 21 is a proper excuse to have a party. But this birthday has even more significance for Evan and his family. What's that you've got there? It's a banner that we made for the... Um... Oh, let's have a look. It's, a... it's massive. Oh, wow! Look at that oh, one signs, eh? That's really good. Oh, brilliant. Even the dog stood on it. <laughs> it's got the dog's paw brain. <laughs> I think it might just fit in between the speakers across the floor. It proves they love me. <laughs> it's a big birthday for him, 21st, and male, and on testosterone. And I think it'll help the family, you know, sort of... Well, they've accepted it, but, you know, just to get everybody together, just to celebrate, this is Evan, this is my son, and my son is 21. Oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Be careful, are you doing it? Can you get a red one, no? You are. Can you get a red one? <laughs> Blue for a boy. <laughs> we were going to have a massive picture dress. of her in a, of him in his prom dress there, and then him now and put before and after. <laughs> Terrible. I'm not even going to say anything. <laughs> the last time my family was all together, it was my 18th birthday, and it was at my nan's house. I was. Evan to my mum's side of the family, but to my dad's side, I was still Yvonne. So it was quite amusing getting cards with some saying Evan and some saying Yvonne, and the family just were like, what? So, yeah, it's the first time with Evan, and so far I've not had any cards with the wrong name, which is a real big positive. Yeah. Keep everything nice. Happy birthday to you. They're gonna set the lollies on fire! It's a very important thing for me to blow these candles out as Evan, just because it's not been done before with my whole family. All in one! I, th I think having testosterone just before my birthday has made my birthday more happier. And it is like I'm celebrating being me as well as being 21. 21 
Tonight has gone better than what I expected. Um, I was a bit apprehensive, to be honest with you, because I was worried about who was going to turn up, who wasn't. But, you know, the whole family's come together and his friends have come up to celebrate his 21st, you know, as a man. The fact that everyone who I've invited has turned up and they've all accepted me as them, and it's just, it's made me feel so much better. A few weeks later, the couple's dream of getting a place together in Manchester seems one step closer. I'm working full-time now instead of part-time. Um, my job has also changed a bit as well, so I'm kind of working more with clients. So it's more interesting. And after searching for a job for more than a year, Evan also has some good news. Welcome to the Cooperative Insurance. You're speaking to Evan. Can I take your name, please? I've just got a new job. Um, I'm working for the Cooperative Insurance, and it's really, really good. Um, everyone's so lovely, and everything's been so accommodating in everything. And my confidence levels have just soared, so it's really good. It's really positive, and it's about time to. When I started, I told them that I was transitioning from female to male and I met with my manager and they've asked if there was anything which they needed to do or they needed to be aware of and the fact that they asked just made you think actually this company do care and actually I'm in the right place for me to be accepted, to be able to do my job and to be able to do my job to the best ability. So it's been really, really good. OK, have you received your renewal documents in the post? Life has dramatically changed for the young couple since they met, fell in love and moved in together over a year ago. You do sort of stop being a child and start behaving like an adult and, you know, being a lot more independent. So in that respect, it's sort of been sort of a transition from, like, boy to man. Kingston. What is it? What was important to me a year and a half ago... Um, really kind of it's really really changed now actually and um, i'm much more focused on sort of where i'm going in my life what i want to do with my life sort of the future um as opposed to back then when i was so focused on being able to pass as male Ugh, what is in this i can understand peas and carrots right is that pasta yes but yeah, because that's all behind me now i can finally get on with what i want to do in, in my life i know that i'm sam i'm a man and that's what makes me happy Things in the last year haven't been easy and there's always going to be someone there who doesn't like it and will be nasty and mean. However, to have acceptance from your friends, your family and myself is the most important thing ever. Here you go. Oh, tea. What have we got? Never expected to see my daughter change, you know, into a man. But he's happier now than what I've ever known. They're just brilliant. So just the pair of them are just brill. It's great to have Sam in my life and to be going through the same things as me, but what's better is just having someone who loves me for being me and to just be happy and be together. It's just nice to have someone who loves you, basically. <laughs>